Okay, so here's another video on differential equations and this is the fifth installment of my lecture series for the course. And in this video, we're going to talk about some homogeneous equation and to define a homogeneous differential equation, it's a first order ordinary differential equation that is algebraically reducible to a standard differential form in which the coefficients of the differentials are homogeneous functions of the same degree. And we say that the function f of x, y is said to be homogeneous of degree k in terms of x and y if and only if when you replace x by lambda x and y by lambda y, this will happen. So that's lambda raised to k times f of x, y. And k is the degree of that homogeneous differential equation. And the following theorems will help us solve some homogeneous equations. If m of x, y and n of x, y are both homogeneous and of the same degree, then m of x, y all over n of x, y is homogeneous of degree zero. And also, if f of x, y is homogeneous of degree zero in terms of x and y, then the function f of x, y is a function of y over x alone. And for some illustration, let us first verify whether f of x, y equals x squared plus 3y squared plus x, y is a homogeneous function. Okay, to start with, so what we're going to look for is the function f of lambda x, lambda y, okay? And then you just replace this x by lambda x, then raise it to the second power, plus you copy 3, and then you replace y by lambda y square, plus x to be replaced by lambda x, and y to be replaced by lambda y, okay? And then to simplify, so you shall have lambda square, x square, plus 3, lambda square, y square, plus you just multiply these two lambdas, so that is lambda square, x, y. And you will observe that each term here contains lambda square. So you can just factor it out. Then that leaves us with lambda square times x square plus 3. Then this is your y square. And then plus this has been thrown outside. And then what is left at the end is x, y. So you shall have lambda square times the quantity x squared plus 3y squared plus x, y. And you will observe that this is in fact your f of x, y. So you shall now have f of lambda x, lambda y equals lambda square times f of x, y. And this is a homogeneous equation of the second degree. Okay, another one. Say f of x, y equals x cubed minus x, y plus y cubed. Doing the same, you look for f of lambda x, lambda y. We have lambda x raised to the third power then minus x, that's lambda x, y, that's lambda y, okay? And then plus lambda y cubed. And then you can just have lambda cubed, x cubed, minus, you just multiply these two lambdas, so that's lambda square x, y, then plus uh, loss of exponent, okay? Lambda cubed, sorry, that's lambda, not x then y cubed, and you shall have this. And when you try to look for the powers of lambda, so this is 3, this is 2, and this is 3, then based on the definition earlier, they should have of the same degree, and now we can conclude that this is not homogeneous differential equation. Okay? Another one. So say f of x, y equals ln x minus ln y. So what, should, what do we have now is, again, we replace uh, x by lambda x and y by lambda y and then we shall now have ln of x so that's lambda x minus ln of y and that should be lambda y okay and then following the the loss of logarithmic function you know that ln x minus ln y equals ln x over y so we shall have ln of uh, lambda x sorry that's lambda, lambda x all over lambda y, okay? And then you can now drop this off, these two lambdas, okay? You drop this off and that will lead you to ln of x over y, okay? So obviously, again, this ln x over y can be written of this form. So we can now say that f of lambda x lambda y is equal to f of x, y. So this is a homogeneous equation of degree zero. Now, 
uh, based on the definition of a homogeneous differential equation, so we can just uh, identify whether uh, a function f of x, y is homogeneous or not by the degree of each term. So when you try to look on the degree of x here, so that's 2, so this is 2, and this is 1, 1, so you shall have 2, 2, 2, so the degrees of each term are equal, then we can say that this is a homogeneous differential equation of second degree, okay? And then another one, say you can say that this is, the degree here is 3, this is 1, 1, x raised to 1, y raised to 1, so you have 1 plus 1, that's 2, and then this is 3. Since the degree here, the degrees of each term are not equal, then that's why it is confirmed that this is not homogeneous differential equation, okay? So for the solution of a differential equation, let's illustrate this problem. So we will be looking for the general solution of the differential equation x squared plus y squared dx minus xy dy. To verify where, the, where, where, where this is homogeneous or not, so you just take a look on the degrees. So for x squared, that is two. For y squared, that is two. Okay, for x, y, so this is one, one, and that is equal to two. So in fact, this is a homogeneous differential equation. Okay, so when you try to look at it, so we can now let y equals vx, and then you know that dy is equal to v dx plus x db by derivative of product. So that's v times derivative of x plus x times derivative of v. Now, if you're going to ask me what would be my substitu substitution quantity, whether it is y equals vx or x equals vy. So as for me, I'm just going to look on the functions uh, that go along with dx and the function that would go along with dy. So this is your m of xy, okay? That is x squared plus y squared. And this is your n of xy, and that is your xy. So then I will try to identify which of between these two functions, x squared plus y squared and xy, which one is a little simpler. And I guess xy is quite simpler than x squared plus y squared. And this xy go along with dy, okay? So that's why I use y equals vx. So, and that's a simple way on how to identify what will be your substitution quantity okay going on so what are we going to do now is we will replace y by vx okay and then dy this dy shall be replaced by v dx plus x dv and we have this okay so that's x squared plus y squared this y is replaced by vx squared then dx and then x this y is being replaced by vx and you can now see that this dy is being replaced by vdx plus x db okay and from here we can now simplify this algebraically and then later on we will apply the technique of separation of variables and this will lead us to a variable separable okay so to do that so we can just uh, write this as x squared plus vx squared will become v squared x squared and then you just affix dx okay then minus so x vx so that's negative v x squared times v dx plus x dv okay equals zero and then the next step is to collect all the terms containing dx and collect all the terms containing dv and that can be done if we shall have x squared plus v squared v squared x squared dx minus you just introduce vx squared each term inside so you shall have v squared x squared dx minus v x cubed dv and that is equal to zero okay and then combining similar terms i guess we can we shall now have here we can combine this and this, okay, leading us with x squared plus v squared x squared minus v squared x squared dx, okay, minus v x cubed dv equals zero. And we shall now have this, okay. And then 
uh, combining similar terms, you take a look on the expression inside the parenthesis. So you can combine these two, v squared x squared minus v squared x squared, and that led us to x squared alone. And then you affix dx minus vx cubed dv equals zero. And then from here, we can now uh, separate the variables, collect all the terms containing dx and collect all the terms containing dv. So we can, we shall avoid x cubed here, okay? And we can divide everything by x cubed. And then this will become dx over x so that's x squared over x cubed so that's dx over x minus then this can be dropped up and then you only have vdv equals zero okay and then from here we can now integrate each term so that's integral of dx over x minus the integral of vdv equals the integral of zero and you know that the integral of zero is constant then i let it to be c1 and you know that the integral of this is ln of x and this one, you can use the power formula. So that's the integral of V dV is V squared over 2. Okay, And then you shall now have ln x minus 1 half V squared equals C1. Okay, And then you can now let this C1 be equal to ln of C. Right, Since there's a presence of, presence of an ln x in our equation, then you can let this arbitrary constant c1 be equal to ln c. And then obviously from here, you know that y equals vx, and then we can say that v is equal to y over x. And again, this is based on the theorem 2. This is a, a, a hom I mean, the, the, the function f of xy, if it is homogeneous, then it's, it is a function of y over x alone. Okay, so we shall now have ln x minus, and then again, this v squared is being replaced by y over x, so that's y squared over x squared, all right, equals c1, and then again, this c1 is to be replaced by uh, ln c, okay, but before that, we just multiply this by 2x squared, all right. So we shall have 2x squared ln x minus, then there's only y squared left here, equals 2x squared c1. And then eventually, you can now replace uh, ln c by, huh? yeah, I use negative ln c here, sorry. So that's negative ln c. And then, so that I can combine it here. Okay, and this one. Okay, and then eventually, you can now have 2x squared ln x plus 2x squared ln c equals y squared. And then I just throw this on the other side and then I combine this two. And then you can factor out 2x squared, then times ln x, then plus ln c equals y squared. All right. And again, this ln x plus ln c by property of logarithmic function. So that's ln of cx equals y squared. And this is the general solution that we are looking for for this differential equation. Okay, so that's 2x squared ln cx equals y squared. Another one, let's start to work on xy dx minus the quantity x squared plus 3y squared dy equals zero. Again, you try to determine whether this is a homogeneous differential equation based on the power of each term. So here you have one, one, that makes two. So again, this is two and this is two, and they are of the same degrees, then therefore, this is a homogeneous differential equation. And uh, since xy, x squared plus 3y squared, and xy go along with dx, all right? So we can now let x equals vy, okay? And then differentiating x, we have dx equals by derivative product, v dy plus y dv. And again, our goal is to replace x by v y and dx by v dy. So we shall have x, so that's v y times y, this y, and then times dx, where dx is v dy plus y dv, all right, minus, again, that's x squared to be replaced by v y. So that's vy square 
all right? Plus 3y squared times dy equals 0, okay? And then to simplify, you shall now have vy times y times v. So we shall now have vy squared, all right, times v dy plus y dv minus v squared, y squared, plus 3y squared dy, okay? And then what comes next is to collect similar terms. So we just introduce this each term inside. So you shall have v times v, that's v squared, then y squared dy plus vy squared times y is vy cubed dv, all right? Then minus v squared y squared plus 3y squared dy equals zero. And then we collect these two terms since these two terms contains dy. And that leads us to okay, v squared y squared dy plus vy cubed dv minus v squared y squared dy. You just introduce this dy each term here. And then you have minus 3y squared dy equals zero. And then after which you can now say that these two terms, these two terms will become zero. All right. So what is left is vy cubed dv and then minus 3y squared dy, okay? And then since by, by separation of variables, we don't want y cubed here, so we shall divide everything by y cubed, and then this can be canceled out, okay? And then you just uh, apply the loss of exponent, so this is y squared, so we take away two here, so that will become one, and eventually that will lead us to vdv minus 3, y, 3 over y, dy equals zero. And we are now ready to integrate v dv minus the integral of 3 over y dy equals the integral of zero. And then again, by power formula, this is equal to v squared over 2 minus, and this will lead us to 3 ln of y, and this is a constant, and I let it to be c1. Okay. And then we can now uh, replace v by x over y from here you can now say that v equals x over y okay you just divide this by y and then you obtain v equals x over y and then we shall replace this v by x over y right minus 3 l and y and then i let this l this c1 to be l and of c again that's an arbitrary constant okay so to simplifying we shall now have x squared all over 2y squared Okay, minus equals L and C. We will combine these two, all right? So equals L and C plus 3 L and Y. And eventually, this can be equal to L and of C. Then by loss of exponent, oh, sorry, by loss of logarithmic functions. So this is equal to uh, Y cubed. So that's L and C Y cubed, okay? And then you just multiply everything by 2y squared, leading you with x squared equals 2y squared ln of c y cube. And this is the general solution that we are looking for for that differential equation. Okay, another one. Say x cosecant y over x minus y dx plus x dy equals zero. To verify whether this is, since there's presence of transcendental functions, then we might not use the, the, the powers of each term, okay? So what are we going to do is the, the, the usual method of determining whether this is homogeneous differential equation. And that can be done if we replace, you know, x by lambda x, y by lambda y, all right? So this is... This x will become lambda x, y will become lambda y, and then again, x will become lambda x. And then simplifying, you know that this can be canceled out, all right? So we shall now have, you can factor out lambda, okay? So that's x cosecant after, uh, after canceling the lambda, lambda here, then you only have y over x, then lambda has been thrown outside. And then lambda is also thrown outside. Okay. Oh, mm, oh yeah. Uh, this is lambda x dy. We just do it first on the first term. Sorry. And then we can now factor out lambda again. And that leads us to 
x cosecant y over x minus y dx, and then lambda is factored out. So you have x dy equals zero, all right? And you know that this is your f of x, y. So therefore, this is a homogeneous function or homogeneous differential equation of first degree. Okay, to solve this differential equation, again, you know that this x is a little simpler than this. So, and x go along with dy. That's why I let y equals vx. Okay, and then again, dy equals vdx plus x dv. Okay. And then again, replacing x by uh, replacing y by bx, we shall have a x cosecant uh, y, and that is vx over x. And then again, this is y that is to be replaced by vx. And then again, this dy is to be replaced by vdx plus x dv, and that is equal to zero. And then again, uh, simplifying this algebraically, you can now cancel this out. Okay, so that leaves us V here, and then you can introduce X each term inside, and then we shall have X cosecant V minus V, so we shall factor out X here, all right, DX plus X V DX plus X squared DV, okay, and then we can collect all the terms containing DX and collect all the terms containing D. V. So this contains dx, this also contains dx, so we shall have x times cosecant v minus v, and then this one is uh, plus xv and then dx, All right? Plus x squared uh -huh, dv equals zero. And then obviously, again, I will just introduce this x each term here so that I can cancel this out, okay? So you have x cosecant v minus xv plus xv, right? dx, and then plus x squared dv equals zero. And this can now be equal to zero. So you shall have x cosecant v dx plus x squared dv equals zero, all right? Allow me to show it up to you. Okay, so we shall have x cosecant v dx plus x squared dv equals zero. So again, by separation of variables, so we don't want this cosecant v here and we don't want x squared to be here because this is dv and this is dx. So we shall divide everything by x squared cosecant v. Okay, so that leads us to, you can now cancel this out and then this will now become dx over x because this is x and x squared. So you shall have dx over x plus, this can be cancelled out, so you only have dv over cosecant v. And obviously, this is still zero. Again, so we have dx over x plus dv over cosecant v. And we are now ready to integrate each term. So you have integral of dx over x, and you know that 1 over cosecant of v, this is the reciprocal of sine v. All right, so that's why this is integral of sine v dv equals the integral of zero. And again, you know that the integral of zero is a constant and I let it to be c1, okay? So we know that the integral of dx over x is ln x and the integral of sine v is negative cosine v equals c1. And then from here, again, you can now say that v equals y over x, all right? And we can now have ln x minus cosine v replaced by y over x equals, and we will shall replace this by ln of c. Okay. And then eventually you can now combine this ln c and this ln x. So we shall have ln x minus ln c. And then you just throw this on the other side. So you shall have positive cosine y over x. And then again, by loss of logarithmic function, by logarithmic identities, that's ln x minus ln c, is ln x over c equals cosine y over x. And this is the general solution that we are looking for this differential. Okay, so let's have another one. This time we're going to look for the general solution of this differential equation, v squared dx 
plus x times the quantity x plus v dv. And then to verify whether this is a homogeneous differential equation, so I will just introduce x each term here, all right? So I shall have a v squared dx plus x squared plus xv dv, okay, equals zero. And then again, when, when we try to look on the powers of each term, so this is two, this is two, and this is one, one, so that's two, and you know, they are equal, so that's a homogeneous differential equations, okay? So to continue, so you know that this is v squared and this is x times x plus v. And you know that this is quite a little simpler than this. So we let uh, x be equal to vz. Okay, so this time we will be calling out another variable. So let's say it's vz, okay? And then you know that uh, dx is equal to vdc plus z dv. And then we shall replace x by vc and we shall replace dx by vdc plus z dv. And then we shall have, so this is v squared times dx is v dz plus z dv. And then plus x, that's v z plus, this is also x, so that's v z plus v and then a fixed dv equals zero. Okay, so to simplify, we shall again collect all the terms containing dv and all the terms containing dz. So we shall introduce v square here, and then we'll have v cube, right? dz plus v squared z dv plus vz times vc plus v dv equals zero, right? And then you can now introduce vc each term here. So you shall have v squared z squared dv plus v squared z dv equals zero. And then collecting all the terms containing dv, we shall have this, all this term. And then you'll have v cube dz plus v squared c plus v squared z squared plus v squared c dv, okay? And then we can add this to v squared z and v squared c, all right? So we shall have two v squared c plus, you just copy v squared z squared and then v cube dc and then dv here. And then we can now factor out this v squared here. And then we shall have v cube dz plus factor out v squared. So you'll have 2z plus z squared dv, all right? And then by se separation of variables, we don't want v, v cubed here. We don't want 2z plus z squared here. So we shall divide everything by v cubed times the quantity 2z plus z squared, right? So again, you know that this is equal to zero. This can be canceled out. This is v squared over v cube. So you can just cancel this out and you, you take away two here. So we'll have v alone. And then you can now cancel this out and that will lead us to dz over two z plus z squared. And then this is dv over v and this is equal to zero. All right. So we are now ready to integrate integral of dz over 2z plus z squared plus the integral of dv over v equals the integral of zero. And you know that the integral of dv over v is l and v and the integral of zero is, we let it to be c1. And then we shall have this. And then to integrate dz over 2z plus z squared, we shall employ, you know, a partial fraction. We shall decompose first one all over 2z plus z squared, and that is equal to 1 over, you factor this out, you factor out z times 2 plus z, and then you can notice that uh, the denominator contains two linear factors, z and 2 plus z. And for the first linear factor, which is non-repeated, you associate a partial fraction equal to a all over z, plus for the second linear factor that is non-repeated, 
you associate a partial fraction equal to b all over 2 plus z. And we shall have this. Okay, and then to look for the value of a and b, we shall multiply this by uh, z times 2 plus z. All right, so we shall have 1 equals a times 2 plus z plus b times z. All right, so we shall have this. And then we can now uh, use the Heaviside cover up method. So we can now let z be equal to zero and uh, z equals, you let this to be zero. So that's negative two. All right. So if z is zero, you can now replace this by zero. You replace this by zero. So you shall have one equals a times 2 plus 0 plus b times 0. And you know that this is 0 and this is equal to 2. So you shall have 1 equals 2a and that leads you to a equals 1 half. And to look for the value of b, we shall let z equals negative 2. And then you have 1 equals a times 2 minus 2. So z is replaced by negative 2 times b or plus b, sorry then z is to be replaced by negative 2. And then and you know that this is 0, so you now have 1 equals negative 2b, and it follows that b is negative 1 half. And we can now replace this a by 1 half and b by negative 1 half. So we shall now have integral of a over z dz plus the integral of b over 2 plus z dz and then you have a one half dz all over z plus integral of negative one half dz all over two plus z all right so we shall have one half integral of dz over z minus one half integral of dz over two plus z and you know that this will lead us to an ln function du over u so that's one half ln z minus also this will lead us to an ln function and that's ln of 2 plus z. All right. So you have one half ln z minus one half ln 2 plus z. I intentionally do not write plus z here. Okay. So then we can now replace this term by one half ln z minus one half ln of 2 plus z. So we shall now have one half ln z minus one half ln 2 plus z plus ln v equals c1 okay and then we can now um multiply everything by two so that we can eliminate this uh one half we can avoid one half here so you have ln z minus ln 2 plus z plus you multiply this by two okay so you have two ln b equals two c1 and you know that the, we can let this to be uh by applying logarithmic function sorry the properties of logarithmic function. So you have ln of z, then this is preceded by plus sign. So this 2 ln v equals ln v squared. This 2, you just write it as power of v here. And then since this is preceded by minus sign, you just write this 2 plus z on the denominator. And that leads you to ln z v squared all over 2 plus z. And again, this 2c1, you can let it to be ln of c since it's an arbitrary constant. And then you can now have ln of z v squared all over 2 plus z equals ln c. And it follows that c okay, is equal to z v squared all over 2 plus z. All right? And again, we shall now replace uh, z by, from here, you can now let z equals x over v, right? So z equals x over v. So this z is to be replaced by x over v. So we shall now have, okay, z is also to be replaced by x over v times v square all over 2 plus x over v equals c. And simplifying you can just combine these two by getting the lcd so you shall have okay, v times 2 is 2v plus you just copy x and this one x over v e times v squared will only have x v 
all right, or Vx. So you have Vx all over 2V plus X all over V equals C. And then, you know, when you simplify this Vx over 2V plus X, you shall have V square X over 2V plus X, and that is equal to C. Okay, so that we have V squared X all over 2V plus X equals C. And this is the, uh, I think, yeah, you can, we can write the general solution of this differential equation, or you can just multiply 2V plus X here. Okay, so you shall have V squared X equals C times 2V plus X. And that's the general solution to this differential equation. Okay, let's have some more. Yeah. Say so y squared dy equals x times x dy minus y dx times the quantity e raised to x over y. Again, when you examine the powers of each term, you can say that this is a homogeneous differential equation. So again, you choose y squared and this is uh, x times x dy minus y dx times e to the x over y. So we can, we can now... We cannot identify which one is simpler because, you know, there are presence of x dy minus y dx here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I will divide everything by y squared, and then that leads me t2, sorry, so this can be cancelled out, okay? And, you know, that is equal to dy all over x, I just combine these two first, x e raised to x over y, and then I regroup these two, uh, sorry, I regroup these terms because I notice a special pattern. So that's x dy minus y dx all over y squared. And you, then you recall the derivative of quotient. You know that the derivative of uh, x over y is equal to y squared. Then this is y times the derivative of x minus x times the derivative of y and only the, the the only difference is that this is x dy which is preceded by plus sign here and this is uh y dx which is preceded by minus sign here so what i'm going to do is i will factor out negative one from these two terms okay and that led me to negative x e to the x over y times the quantity y dx minus x dy all over y squared and this leads me to setting v equals x over y. So we shall have our, our, our x equals v y. Okay. So using v equals x over y and you differentiate v by the derivative of quotient. So you shall have y dx minus x dy over y squared. So we shall replace v equals x y or uh, x equals vy and we shall replace dv uh, we shall replace y dx minus x dy over y squared by dv so this is our dv and this x over y is our v okay and then we shall now have dy equals negative x so uh, again x from here is being replaced by vy so that's vy and then E, and then this X over Y is being replaced by V, okay? So that's why it's negative VY E to the V, and this whole bunch of expression here is represented by DV, okay? So that's negative VY E to the V, DV. And again, by separation of variable, so this is DV, so we don't want Y here. So we shall divide everything by Y, all right? And then that leads us to dy over y dy over y equals negative v e to the v dv all right okay so that's dy over y equals negative v e to the uh, v dv and then we can now integrate both side of the equation so that's integral of dy over y equals the integral of negative v e to the v dv and you know again that this is an ln function that's an ln y and when you wish to integrate this part so you can use integration by parts okay so you know that's an ln y and then to integrate the integral of negative ve raised to v dv we shall use integration by parts so we can let u equals v and i will call another variable 
dz equals e to the v dv. And you know that uh, the derivative of u is equal to dv and the integral of dz is z and the integral of e to the v dv is e to the v. And as you can notice, you might uh, see that uh, we employ a different technique, uh, I mean, various techniques of integration. Earlier, we use integral of integral by partial fraction and now we are using integration by parts and you have to review your notes on those particular types of special techniques of integration so we shall have right and then you know that th that can now be written as the integral of negative okay so we just throw this out so that's negative integral of v e to the v dv is equal to negative the integral ah uh, sorry negative times uz minus the integral of z du you recall that the integral of u dv is equal to ah uh, sorry the integral of ah uh, yeah u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du okay so we shall have negative uz minus the integral of z du and that leads us you to negative u where u is v then z where c is e to the v so that's v e to the v minus the integral of z that's e to the v times du where in du is dv all right so we shall now have okay and then you know that the integral of e to the v dv is simply e to the v okay and then you just copy this part and then you have negative v e raised to v okay and then you just introduce this minus sign here okay so that's why it becomes plus here so that's plus e to the v and again i intentionally do not write c here so therefore you can now write this side of the equation as negative v e to the v plus e to the v and then you can now write c plus c sub one okay that's the arbitrary constant okay and then you can factor out e to the v here okay so that's e to the v times negative v plus one okay when e to the v is factored out then negative v is left here plus one and then you can now simply write this as ln of y and then this c sub one before i forgot we let it to be ln c so then we combine this two this ln y and ln c so that's ln y minus ln c equals e to the v and then i just use the commutative property that's why it become one minus v here so yeah and then you know that ln y minus ln c is ln y over c okay and then you just simply uh, replace what v by x over y okay and then v by x over y so you have ln y minus ln c equals e to the x over y times the quantity one minus x over y and then later on you just simplify this part as you add the two expression so you have y then y minus x all right and then you can now write this ln y minus ln c as ln y over c okay and then you can just multiply everything by y so you shall have y ln y over c equals e raised to x over y times the quantity y minus x and yeah that's the general solution that we're looking for i think this will be the last example and this time we're going to look for its particular solution okay okay so we have an initial value here x equals 2 y equals 1 for this differential equation all right so again, when you try to look at the powers of each term, you know that the sum of each power on each term are equal. So this is 2, 2, 1 plus 1, that gives 2, and this is another 2. So they are of the same degree, and that therefore, that's homogeneous. Okay. So again, this is y squared, and this is x squared plus 3x plus 4y squared, and y squared is a little simpler than this, and it go along with x dx so therefore i let x equals vy all right and then you know that the derivative of x is v dy plus y db so again we should replace x by v vy and uh dx by v dy plus y db so we shall have y square times dx is to be replaced by v dy plus y db all right 
then plus x squared. That's to be replaced by vy. So that's v squared y squared. All right. Plus three x to be replaced by vy. Then times y. Plus copy four y squared and then copy dy equals zero. All right. And then we can just simplify this as okay, just the same thing by uh, separation of variables. You can introduce this y squared each term here. That's why it gives us y squared v dy plus y cubed. So that's y squared times y. That's y cubed dv. All right. Then, uh -huh. we can just simplify this as v squared y squared plus 3vy squared. Yeah. So that's 3vyy. So that's 3vy squared plus 4y squared dy. And I think we can now collect all the terms containing dy. So I will just write y cube. Hold on. I will just write y cube dv. Okay. And then I will group these two uh, terms. So I shall have this is y squared v. So that's y squared v. And then I will just copy these terms v squared y squared plus 3vy squared plus 4, sorry, 4y squared, and then I will affix dy, and then I let it to be 0. Okay? And then when you try to look at this equation, this y squared v, and yeah, this, 3vy squared. y squared v and 3vy squared will give us 4vy squared. All right? So this is 4 y squared v or 4 v y squared so you shall have y cube dv plus v squared y squared plus 4 v y squared plus 4 y squared dy equals zero and then you know that we can factor out this is dy what we don't want here ah yeah this is y squared y squared y squared so we can factor it out Okay, that leads us to y cubed dv plus y squared v squared plus 4v plus 4 dy equals zero. And then we divide. We don't want this y squared to be here since this, is, no, no, sorry. We don't want uh, v squared plus 4v plus 4 here since this is dy. And we don't want y cubed here since this is dv. Okay, so we divide everything by, all right, y cubed times v squared plus 4v plus 4. And that leads us to, you can now cancel this out. So you shall have dv all over v squared plus 4v, sorry, that's 4v plus 4, plus this can be canceled out. Then you only have y squared over y cubed. Okay, so that's 1 over y, and then that's dy, or simply that's dy over y, and that is equal to 0. Obviously, when, when 0 is divided by uh, y cubed times v squared plus 4v plus 4, that will still give us zero, okay? And we continue integrating, okay? So you know, again, that the integral of zero is constant and I let it to be c1, and you know that the integral of dy over y is ln y. But for this one, we shall imply again, uh, you know, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we might use uh the factory because this v squared plus 4b plus 4 is just equal to v plus 2 quantity squared all right oh, yeah and then you can now let uh huh, u to integrate this u equals v plus 2 and you know that du is dv so you have du over u squared or you can write this as u raised to negative 2 du and then by power formula you have u raised to negative 2 over ne oh, sorry uh negative 2 plus 1 so that's negative 1 alone all over negative 1 okay and then i will not write c here anymore so that's negative 1 over u or negative 1 over v plus 2 all right so let's see yeah so that's negative 1 over uh, v plus 2. And then, so this is negative 1 over v plus 2 plus L and y equals C. Okay. And then what's happened next is we shall be looking for the value of C here whenever x equals 2 and y equals 1. So we shall replace, ah, no, before I forget, uh, we shall replace this v first by from here x over y. Sorry. 
Okay? So you shall have negative 1 all over x over y plus 2, okay? Then plus l and y equals c1. And, uh huh. Okay, just simply write this as c, sorry. And then you can just simplify this. So you have negative 1 all over, you get the LCD y, x plus 2y, then plus l and y equals c. Okay, and then. We can now write this. You just multiply y and 1 here, there. Yeah. So that's y over x plus 2y plus l and y equals c. And then don't forget that minus sign. Okay. So if x equals to and y equals 1, so y is to be replaced by 1 and x is to be replaced by 2. This is y replaced by 1 and this is to be replaced by 1. So we shall have negative 1 all over 2 plus. 2 times 1 plus ln1 equals c. And you know that ln1 is equal to 0. And you know that 2 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 4. So you have c equals negative 1 fourth. And this negative 1 fourth is to be replaced here. Okay? So we shall have negative y. This is the general solution. So that's negative y all over x plus 2y plus ln y equals negative 1 fourth. Okay? And then, yeah, we can just simplify this algebraically by multiplying everything by negative 4, okay? We just multiply this by negative 4, so that's why this negative 1 times negative 4 will become positive 4y all over x plus 2y. Then multiply this by negative 4, so you have negative 4 ln y equals negative 1 4 times negative 4 is 1. And then, yeah, you can just multiply Again, everything by x plus 2y, and I think we're done. Oh, yeah, so that's 4y minus 4 times x plus 2y, ln y equals x plus 2y. And this is the particular solution of this differential equation given this initial values. And, yeah, you can just let it to be zero. <laughs>